Melissa, the reported rising racial abuse cases now in Greece with Panagiotis Satoris. He's a journalist and lecturer on social and political philosophy. He's from the University of Aegean. Sir, thank you for being with us. I mean, are these attacks that uh, Jacob was talking about there on immigrants largely spontaneous or organised in any way? How do you see it? No, they're organised. I think that we are witnessing the rise of a neo-fascist movement. Uh, which was also expressed in the electoral success of the Golden Dawn Party, a party with open neo-fascist, even neo-Nazi uh, positions, and they are organizing all these uh, attacks, uh, which is part of their uh, propaganda and, in a way, appeal. And yes. this is how they also try to attract people, mainly people who are disappointed, who, who are full of anger, and they are trying to direct this anger to victims, such as uh, Im immigrants. It's a very, it's a very uh, negative uh, development. It is a sign of a very deep social and political uh, crisis in Greece. All this rise of uh, xenophobia in, in Greece and all these racist uh, attacks. But it's it is also the responsibility of mainstream parties. Yeah, who in the past two years, yes. Panagotas, I was just going to say, I wanted to remind our viewers, uh, just to bring them up to date on this story, of course, that the ultra-nationalist Golden Dawn Party won 7% of votes in the general election. Now, we have heard about this before. We have heard there was a worry uh, we, when the times are, uh, are bad, that this is a time when, you know, uh, far-right parties can, can take hold, fascists can take hold. Um, uh, how bad is the situation? Are you particularly linking the, the country's economic woes at the moment to this rise in attacks? There is a direct correlation, as you see it, is there? Well, there is, a, there is a relation. It is a society in crisis. Most of the people who feel the burden of crisis uh, generally opted not for the neo-fascists. Uh, on the contrary, we've seen uh, more progressive forms of radicalization of society, especially those people who in the past two years had experiences of collective struggle. But all those people who, who have suffered from the crisis, but uh, they, are, they feel marginalized, they feel they are isolated, they are individualized. These, uh, these people can more easily fall prey to uh, neo-fascist uh, rhetoric because it's very easy to say, okay, who, who, who's to blame? Blame the immigrants. Of course, it's, it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. Immigrants have been the victims of social and economic crisis in Greece. Uh, moreover, they have been worst hit. Unemployed immigrants are much more than unemployed Greeks in, in terms of uh, percentage. They are the weakest uh, link in the labor market uh, chain. And so they are also victims. And that's the problem because if we see the, if we see the large picture, people, people who are suffering, Greek people, I th should be, you know, uh, shoulder to shoulder with immigrants because they f they face the same problems. They live in the same neighborhoods. They sa face the, the same danger of poverty. And that's a problem with uh, racist uh, rhetoric and practices. They divide social strata, which could be part of a broader alliance for progressive change. And Panagiotis, of course, also mustn't be forgotten. Immigrants are often prepared to work for less, do jobs that maybe other people don't want to do. And I guess, therefore, uh, the people of Greece should be actually supporting them uh, because they're supporting an ailing economy in a time of crisis. I guess that's the immigrants' argument too, isn't it? Well, uh, whatever one might call uh, development or growth in the past two decades in Greece, it, it should be mainly attributed also to uh, immigrant labor. They, they've been part of this society, they've been part of this labor force, and most of them, want, they want to be part of Greek society, they want to have a job, they, they want to have a, a decent life, and that's the problem with neo-fascist uh, practices and rhetoric, that they do not... They do not turn anger against those who are responsible. They turn anger and rage against the victims of the current crisis. How have the police been seen to be handling these complaints? There's a very, very big problem with the police, which was also, which can also be explained by the fact that far right, even fascist uh, political positions uh, today prevail uh, within the Greek police force, as it was uh, made evident by the fact that. In polling, in special polling stations at the recent elections for police officers, uh, uh, Golden Dawn had uh, percentages much bigger than their national average. This is a very, very serious 
problem. Uh, ideologically, many of uh, police officers, especially in special police forces, uh, feel attracted to this kind of violent uh, racist rhetoric. And also, there have been many allegations of police collaborating with uh, neo-fascist groups. And what about media coverage? Very briefly, Panagoras, time's a bit against us. I just wanted to ask you that side of it. How's the media been paying attention to it? I think that the media, uh, mainstream media, have been in a way responsible because in the past, uh, past couple of years, they have fueled anti-immigrant feelings. They have legitimized, in a way, anti-immigrant rhetoric. Of course, now, when they saw that those, this kind of violence in front of them, for example, when a, a neo-fascist member of parliament attacked other members of parliament on live television, they denounced these sort of practices, but they have fueled anti-immigrant rhetoric in the past. Thanks ever so much for your thoughts, Panagoras Satiris, journalist, lecturer and uh, social and politically, political philosopher at the University of Aegean. It's a mouthful, that. Thank you for being on the line, sir. Thank you. Nice.